Good afternoon and welcome to The Snake Bite. I'm George Connolly. And I'm Andrew Pauling, and here's what the Mocs have been up to. On Sunday, the men's basketball team won their 15th Sunshine State Conference Championship and second in a row under head coach Mike Donnelly. Here's what seniors Jair Rogers, Brett Hansen, Jack Roush, and Coach Donnelly had to say following the win. Jack, a career-high 31 in the championship game for the conference in your senior year. What's that like? Uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, we won the game. That's all that matters to me. I, you know, 0-31, I don't care. We won the game. That's all that matters to me. You won the game. The team's been great all season long. You're going on to the regional. We're presumably going to be hosting it here next week. What's the game plan? What are you guys going to be working on all week of practice? Just take one game at a time. You know, this is a new season. It's playoff mode. Um, Nova Southeast is a great team. And I'm more than, we're more than likely we're going to see them again. So we need to take one game at a time, win Saturday, win Sunday, and hopefully get that Sweet 16 game on uh, Tuesday. Jair, you scored your 1,000th career collegiate point here tonight. You won the championship for the SSC. What does it mean to reach that milestone in a championship game? Uh, it means a lot, you know. This is why I came here is to be a part of something like this. It's a great atmosphere, and I couldn't do it without my teammates. So all credit to my teammates. So, yeah, it's a great atmosphere. Brett, you were named Player of the Year for the conference, and now you get Tournament Player of the Year as well, MVP of this tournament. What's that mean for you? Uh, it's a great honor. I mean, these are goals that you build from the beginning of the year. You want to win championships, cut nets down, and it feels really good to do it on our home court. A real complete game. You beat the Sharks for the second time this season. What's that feel like? You guys played strong from start to finish. Yeah, I thought we set the tone early. Um, right off the jump, you could tell our speed and intensity was there. And unlike the other two uh, postseason games so far, and I really liked it right from the jump. I, I liked how we came out and started the game. What's it mean to win this here today? Uh, last year was great, winning at Nova. But there's nothing like doing it on your home court in front of our terrific fans. We have the best fans in all of Division II basketball. And it's been five years you know, since we won here, uh, first time with this, with this coaching staff, so I'm super proud of our guys. Feels great right now. We got a lot of accolades from this team. Brett, player of the year, and then MVP of the tournament, Jalen, defensive player of the year. Jack and Jair both hitting their 1,000 career points over the course of this season. They're cutting down the net behind you. What's it mean to see this veteran group of guys step up all season long? I mean, it's so rewarding because I keep telling these guys, my job, you know, this is great, trophies are great, banners are great, cutting nets down, but as a coach, you just want to max out the group. And they just keep letting us push them. And we weren't easy on them this week. And they took it. I thought we were ready to play. And that's based off of our leadership and experience. Uh, but these guys deserve everything that they're getting right now. We've worked extremely hard. We've paid our dues, which that's what champions have to do, right? You've got to pay your dues. And these guys have done that. The Mocs were named the number one team in the South region and will host the three-day regional tournament this Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday. The team will take on number eight, Miles College, in their quarterfinal game on Saturday. On the women's side, the Mocs were knocked out of the SSC tournament in a 60-74 loss against Eckerd in their semifinal game. The team, which has been led by all-SSC standout Julia Jenicki, will head to Cleveland, Tennessee to compete in the South Regional as the Mocs were named number seven seed in the tournament. This is the fifth consecutive regional berth for the team and the 14th in program history as they, take on, as they prepare to take on the number two ranked Union this Friday. In baseball news, the Mocs played five games over spring break, going three and two over the week. Jacob Teeter and Alan Burnsett are tied for the conference lead with seven home runs each as the Mocs offense scored six or more runs in all five games. Jared Candy, Brant Brown, and Thomas Spinelli led the pitching staff this weekend as the trio combined to throw 18 innings in the Northwood series. The team took on Winoa State last night, and a recap of that game can be found on fscmox.com. The softball team picked up their first conference win of the season, defeating Tampa in the final game of their alumni weekend series at the Chris Bellotto Field. Coach Bellotto, who is in her 40th season as the Mox head coach, announced that she will retire at the end of the season and is handing the reins over to assistant coach Mo Triner. The Mox continue their lengthy homestand with a doubleheader against Minnesota Duluth tonight at 5 and 7 and will take on Eckerd in a three-game conference series this weekend. Now, Andrew, can you talk a little bit about the legacy that is going to be left behind by Chris Bellotto? Well, Coach Bellotto, she's second all-time in D2 coaching wins for a softball coach, so the legacy is going to be one of winning. She has 13,000-plus career wins, 24 SSC conference titles. They were national champions back in 93, runners-up in 84 and 04. 
and she's a 15-time SSC Coach of the Year, so all these accolades over a lengthy and storied career, the legacy can simply be summed up in one word, and that is winning. Absolutely, and uh, let's switch gears to baseball for a little bit. In, the, in baseball news, the team has switched things up from a pitching standpoint, so can you talk a little bit about the upcoming plan for that moccasin rotation? Well, they've had to adapt a little bit due to some injuries to some arms in the rotation. We see Jared Candy is now going to be the Friday night guy for the Mox. He stepped up. He pitched really well through six innings, had some tough luck there in the seventh in the Northwood game. He did very well, expect him to continue to do that. Brant Brown's really done well this season. He stays in that number two spot for the Mox, and they move closer Thomas Spinelli into the three spot in the rotation. Thomas is a guy that's very likely to get drafted at the end of the season. He's got a lot of upside. He's done very well. He's done exceptionally well out of the bullpen for the Mox. And now in that three spot in the rotation, he gets a new opportunity to show that he's got a little bit more durability in that elbow and that he can go five, six, seven innings. Logan Verino, the setup man, now moves into the closer's role. So some guys changing roles a little bit, but I think they're all going to be more than capable to adapt and to find success in these new roles. Absolutely. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Now, also, both basketball teams will, get, will be competing for a regional title this weekend. What can we expect from both of those teams? Well, the men, they get to host the regional, as we talked about in the reader. They're excited. You heard what they said during their interviews at the start of the show. They want to host this. They're not ready to just cut down that one net for winning the Sunshine State Conference. They want to cut down more nets. They want to win the regional. They want to go to the Final Four. That's the aspirations that these guys have had from day one going on, and we expect them to achieve that. On the women's side, they've had that scrappy offense all year. Julia Jenicki has been nothing short of outstanding. But at the same time, you're going to need Kat Kamenko. You're going to need Mackenzie Steele to step up and play to the best of their ability if the Mox are going to make it out of that regional in Tennessee. Also, Ashley Shell on the defensive end has been great this year, but they're going to need everyone to play their best basketball as the number seven team if they want to advance out of that South region. Thank you for those insights, Andrew. And now let's switch gears to women's lacrosse. The women's team improved to five and three on the season after picking up blowout wins against Wingate and number six Regis over spring break. The Mocs are averaging over 14 goals a game while shooting 48% as a team. Brenna Smith was named SSC Player of the Week after scoring 14 goals over three games, while Brittany Yamale won Conference Defensive Player of the Week for her efforts in the win against Regis. The girls are back in action tonight at 7 for their faculty and staff recognition day. The game will be against Stonehill and, will be, uh, and they will be in action once again this weekend against Mercy on Saturday. On the men's side, the Mox picked up a 13-10 win against Mount Olive on Sunday, improving to 3-3 three three on the season. The team has re-entered the United States Intercollegiate Lacrosse Association coaches poll at number 19. Junior Kevin Horwitz was named SSC Specialist of the Week after winning 49 of his 53 face-offs over the Mox pair of games. He was a perfect 26 for 26 in the team's game against St. Rose, which sets an NCAA record for the most face-offs in a game where a player won 100% of his face-offs. The men's tennis team saw their record improve to 9-1 over spring break as the Mocs took an eight-game win streak into their matchup against Hillsdale yesterday. The women also competed yesterday, taking on Bluefield State, and recaps of both matches are available on fscmocs.com. The men are back in action today against Bluefield, while the women take on Tarleton tomorrow. In beach volleyball news, the Mocs fell to 3-5 on the season, dropping their four matchups in St. Petersburg this weekend. The girls started off their season by winning three straight games at the Ruthven Beach Courts here in Lakeland, which is where the team will play their next 10 games as they return to Lakeland for a three-week homestand that will make up the rest of their schedule for the month of March. That's all from us this week on The Snake Bite. I'm Andrew Pauling. And I'm George Connolly. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week at 3.